Today we're picking back up in chapter 16, looking at uh, verses 10 and 12, and then also going to finish out the chapter in verse 15 and 16. Now, what we see happen today is something that prophetically, and in terms of history as well, means a lot. And it also explains a lot of tension between the Arabs and the Jews. So, picking up in verse 10, where we left off last time, Hagar's in the wilderness. The angel of the Lord said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for a multitude. Ishmael, the son who was born to Hagar and Abram, God would in his sovereignty bless Ishmael to father a great multitude, just as he would bless Isaac, who is God's chosen heir of the Jewish people. God would multiply them in that sense, multiply their peoples greatly. But although God promises this, he also makes some interesting statements in verse 11 and 12. And the angel of the Lord said to her, said to Hagar, Behold, you are pregnant, and you shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has listened to your affliction. Now Ishmael is a name that means God hears. This is interesting because Hagar is calling the name of the God, uh, the God who sees her, the God in a sense who hears of her plight. God hears will be the name of her son, Ishmael. You shall call his name Ishmael because the Lord has listened to your afflictions. This is all surrounding the fact of what Hagar has gone through, being the collateral damage, if you will, of Abram and Sarai's sin, being the surrogate mother of Abram's son. Verse 12, He, that is Ishmael, shall be a wild donkey of a man, his hand against everyone and everyone's hand against him, and he shall dwell against all his kinsmen. Now this is something very interesting. Ishmael was promised he would have a large number of descendants, and that's true. Ishmael, even later on in Scripture, it tells us, would have 12 sons, 12 great uh, tribal leaders, if you will, kind of like the 12 sons of Israel, the 12 tribes. But the difference with Ishmael is he will be a wild donkey of a man. Very interesting. Every time I read that, I, it kind of makes me chuckle a little bit. But it's actually a very, very rough description of what this man's going to grow up to be. This baby Ishmael will grow up to be a man who's a wild donkey. I mean, come on, to call a man a donkey, this is a pretty, uh, pretty rude description of what he's going to become. His hand is going to be against everyone, and everyone's hand, hand is going to be against him, and he's going to dwell over against all of his kinsmen. There is always tension within the Arabic peoples. There, there are a large number of Arabic people, uh, even in the world today, descended from Ishmael. But everybody seems against the Arabs. There's always fighting going on in the Middle East. They're always warring against one another, he against he, her against her, whatever. And not only that, but there's even tension within their family. It even says he shall dwell over against all of his kinsmen. The Arabic people fight amongst themselves just as much as they fight amongst everybody else, if not more. And this is a prophecy of what would happen. Now going down to verse 15, And Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram called the name of his son whom Hagar bore Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. And knowing his age here is going to be important to when Isaac will later on be born in the latter half of uh, the next few chapters. But what we see happen here is Ishmael. Now we also see something else. The Arabic peoples trace their lineage to Ishmael, the Ishmaelites. But there's also another group of people that come later on in history who also look and trace their lineage to this time, and, and many trace their lineage to Ishmael. And that is not just the Arabic peoples, but to go a step farther, a religious um, identifier as well, Muslim people, can trace their lineage back to this moment. And they see the promise that God made as Ishmael's descendants. And how he was preserved. And 
So the tension we see in the Middle East and a lot of the tension that Israel has gone through through all the generations that they've gone through is due to this one moment of Abram's sin. God in his sovereignty has used and allowed and permitted things to happen as a result of Abram's sin. But Abram's sin of having Ishmael rather than waiting on God for Isaac, doing things his own way, doing things his and Sarah's way, has caused tension and turmoil, not just for the Jews and the Arabs versing each other, but for the entire world for generations since Abraham's sin right here. Our sin, brothers and sisters, our application is that our sin affects generations after us. And our character, like the character of Ishmael, can set the tone for our family legacy. Those are some powerful and humbling realities. Next time we are going to look at the mark of the covenant, the sign of the covenant that God is making with Abram. And this sign is adhered to by both Muslims and Jews. And it's interesting, the reason why is, well, we'll see next time. God bless brothers and sisters, and may we not do things our own way like Abram and Sarah did, but may we wait on God. And may our legacy be one of faithfulness and obedience, hearing well done, good and faithful servant, rather than undergoing the discipline of an unfaithful servant.